Well, in a time where there are so many Americans who are really disenchanted with the major political parties, a lot of people don't like Joe Biden, a lot of people not real fond of President Trump, it seems like that'd be an opportune moment for the Libertarian Party, and yet the Libertarian Party is getting probably less press than it has any time in the recent past, certainly far less press than it got last time in 2016. Joining us on the line is Dr. Joe Jorgensen. She is the 2020 Libertarian Party presidential nominee. Dr. Jorgensen, thanks so much for joining the program. Really, really appreciate it. Oh, thanks, Ben. Great to be here. So why don't we talk about the, the possibility of success for the Libertarian Party? You know, as somebody who identifies as a, a social conservative with real libertarian leanings on, on government involvement uh, in the issues, why hasn't the Libertarian Party seen greater success? Is that a party structural issue? Is that a two-party issue? Why hasn't the Libertarian Party become more of a viable third party in American life? Well, I would suggest that for what you said in the opening, you said that a lot of people aren't that thrilled about Biden and some people don't like Trump. So they realize that people aren't enthralled with their options. And so they certainly don't want people to hear about other options. And we see that right now with the debates. Uh, we have two, as the media labels them, two old white guys, uh, two old rich white guys. And I would add both of which want to continue to make decisions for you, both of which want to spend your money and neither of which wants to bring their troops home. And I would say there's not a lot of difference. And I would be a real alternative on the stage. And so right now the debate commission is saying, no, we can't you have we can't have you on the debate unless you're scoring at a certain percentage in the polls. But then they're not including my name in the polls. So and, and by the way, the people who say, well, that's not very fair of the debate commission. Well, they don't realize that the debate commission consists of half Democrats and half Republicans. So there you go. We're speaking to Dr. Joe Jorgensen. She's Libertarian Party nominee for presidential candidate in, in 2020. So, Dr. Jorgensen, let's talk about some of your policy positions. There's, there's a lot of vagaries sort of in, in the Libertarian Party, and it changes based on candidate year to year. There are some libertarians who are more hawkish on foreign policy, some libertarians who are more isolationist on foreign policy. There's some libertarians who seem rather sanguine about government involvement in freedom of association that prevents, for example, people who are religious from enacting their religion in daily life. Some people who are very much in favor of getting the government out of the business of business such that religious people can act as they see fit in their daily life. Where do you fall on those two particular issues, namely foreign policy and the rights of religious Americans? Well, my platform is the Libertarian Party platform. That's what I ran on. And, you know, some people call us isolationists uh, without realizing what our actual policy policy is. And that's why when I say I want to bring our troops home, I say I want to turn America into one giant Switzerland, armed and neutral. So absolutely, we need to defend our country. However, just like Switzerland, who is a banking capital, who di who does have tourists come in, who does have people cross the borders and goods cross the borders, I want to be good world neighbors with other people. I want to allow tourists in and I want our people to travel. And Unlike Donald Trump, I don't want to get into any tariff wars, any trade wars, because I want people to be able to peacefully trade with one another. That, more than anything else, will help prevent wars. And that's one thing that I pointed to, is that we got into World War II after uh, Japan bombed us. Well, they're probably not going to bomb us now, considering how many Toyotas and Hondas we buy from them, because you tend to not bomb your best neighbor. Or, or your best customer, rather. So we just need to be good neighbors to the world. So speaking in, in that particular arena, how, what would be your strategy to counter uh, a rising China? So China has been engaged in intellectual property theft. They've been engaged in bad behavior, ranging from the, essentially, the, the release of people with the Wuhan virus uh, throughout the world uh, to aggressive action on the international stage. What would be your treatment of China? I, I certainly understand the, the free trade position. I'm a free trader myself. But I also understand the idea that sometimes the United States has to take uh, action in the economic sphere against nations that, threatens Amer that threaten American interests, including during the Cold War, the Soviet Union. How, how would you treat China? Oh, of course, that's just that. And we need to go after them in court. And I'm not even against going after, if, if it's determined that we got the virus from the lab or people were doing something wrong or, you know, whether it was ne negligence or on purpose, I have no problem with taking legal action against those people. Now, what I don't want to do is get into an all-out war with China. We can't afford to get into a war with China because we could blow each other up. We have the power to do that. However, I see no problem with going after the individuals or the organization, just as, for instance, if we had a university lab that did something, uh, somebody could go after the university lab. But that doesn't mean that you go after the entire 
Chinese government, and it doesn't mean that you go after all the Chinese people. There's no reason to punish the Chinese citizens in general by not trading with them because there are others who are committing theft. We need to, uh, you know, just like any other theft, bring them to justice, lock them up. We're speaking with Dr. Joe Jorgensen, the libertarian presidential candidate. So, Dr. Jorgensen, on the religious liberty issues, I say there have been some pretty significant splits between libertarians and religious American social conservatives. As I say, I'm a social conservative. What I mean by that is that I believe in strong social institutions, the strengthening of church and family. A lot of people who are religious tend to see libertarian ideals as as existing in sort of direct contravention of that. I've never understood why that that has to be. But there are certain you know libertarians who have said before that, for example, broad ranging rules that force businesses to serve people that they don't want to serve in in spite of their religious ideals that th- those should be promulgated. Where do you stand on religious liberty? Well, the that it's clear from the Constitution that we do have religious liberty, and I would like to point out part of the problem why people. Uh, maybe flock to the Republican parties because they listen to the, what the Republican politicians do as opposed to what their platform says. And I would like to point out that I always make the distinction, and I did this in 1996 with my stump speech. I point out how the many fine Republican voters are not getting what they want from the Republican politicians. And we saw, for instance, John McCain do his big thumbs down when they were trying to get rid of Obamacare and the Republican politicians that supported Obamacare, even though we saw that distressing case. It just broke my heart to see the nuns. And and keep in mind, Kathy, you know, Catholics in general, abortion is murder. However, Catholic nuns particularly, that's very distressing that they were required by Obamacare to provide insurance that would uh, basically cause them to offer what they think is murder. Now, the, the Libertarian Party, first of all, would never pass such legislation nor support it, nor would they be like John McCain with the big thumbs down. Secondly, uh, while Republican legislation has indirectly or directly paid for Planned Parenthood and so forth, it, the Libertarian Party, even the staunchest pro, uh, pro-choice person, would never take a single penny of taxpayers' dollars and have it go towards abortion because we believe in religious freedom and that people should spend their own money how they want to and they should lead their lives how they want to, not how the government wants them to. And also I'd like to point out, Religious freedom also includes you get to marry who you want to marry. It's, it's what your church says. If your church is against gay marriage, then okay, then you don't have to get, you know, you, your church doesn't have to allow it. If your, your church does allow gay marriage, it should allow it. And we saw with the free market, again, the free market always does a better job of protecting our rights. In the early 90s, the Walt Disney Company offered benefits to the partners of their gay employees Whereas in 2012, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton were still against gay marriage. So, again, we've got the uh, larger parties who are interfering with uh, religion and people's personal beliefs. That's Dr. Joe Jorgensen, 2020 Libertarian presidential nominee. You can check out her campaign at Joe20, that's without an E, right? J-O-20. Dot yes. com, <laughs> J-O, the, the number 20.com to check out the Libertarian Party. Dr. Jorgensen, appreciate the time. Oh, thanks so much. Have a great day.